this is Marlene Rabu from uh, Batam. Uh, I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Sela Sazakau from uh, Vatukola. I only listen to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Vale and I'm working at Golden Grove Resort and I love listening to Gold FM because it plays a really wide range of classic I'm Sein Isakio from Kashmir Lotoka. I like Gold FM, but only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Good evening, I'm Akosito Totale. This is FBC News. Tonight, FRA terminates contract of Prime Fiji over fake bonds. Bamberg accused the peers in court with visible burns. And government hits out at incorrect reporting by the Fiji Times. Prime Fiji's contract to install streetlights in rural areas has been terminated. The company submitted fake bonds in order to secure the contract from the Fiji Roads Authority. Edwin Ann reports Prime Fiji has also been referred to the Fiji Independent Commission Against Corruption. Prime Fiji allegedly used fake Westpac bonds to win two contracts worth almost $6 million. Uh, we check the uh, authenticity of the bonds and uh, we um, uh, um, found in this case that they raised suspicions. And this was a, pretty much the very first hurdle in the process um, that we picked this up. Fiji Roads Authority then inquired with Westpac which confirmed that no such bonds had been issued. The two contracts for rural electrification have been terminated, while all other work issued to Prime Fiji has been put on hold pending investigations. Our message, of course, is to all uh, would-be suppliers to governments, uh, people who wish to provide services, whether through infrastructure or provision of supplies, that uh, we will ensure that none of this type of behavior actually goes unpunished. Fiji Roads Authority is also investigating overpayments to Prime Fiji based on invoices issued by the contractor. The FRA says its checks and balances are robust, having raised the alarm when things did not seem right with Prime Fiji. I don't, I don't believe there's any additional uh, will be enforced. Uh, like what Rory said, basically all these things just got picked up from day one. As soon as these bonds came in, it just got picked up. So uh, the, the, the systems are in place, the procedures are in place to ensure that you know, these kind of things don't happen. It generally doesn't happen. The Rural Street Light Project will be retended in the coming weeks. Edwin Nand, FBC News. The man accused for the murder of his de facto wife appeared in the Bar Magistrates Court this afternoon. Nazir Sharaz Ali of Yale Levumba, 31, has been charged with one count of murder. Ali was escorted to, co to court under heavy police presence and spotted burns on his face and hands. The case has been transferred to the Lotoka High Court. Ali has been remanded at the Natambo Corrections Facility and will appear in the Lotoka High Court for mention on the 27th of this month. Public Accounts Committee Chair Ashnil Sudakar is contemplating legal action against the Fiji Times newspaper if there is no immediate retraction to clarify the article published by the company yesterday. The article stated that civil service jobs are to be re-advertised. Ali Kimbia has the details. It's this article in Fiji Times that Asnil Sudakar says contains numerous factual errors and misattributes numerous quotations that misrepresent government's reform of the civil service. At no point in time was it uh, stated by me, I never said, that all the existing uh, uh, civil service positions will be uh, re-advertised and people will need to reapply. never said that. In fact, the reporter who uh, reported that Nasik, I, when I read the content, I, I, I called him, I spoke to him in person, and he confirmed that, um, that it wasn't so, uh, that, that I didn't, uh, he didn't quote me. Sudakar says the report has caused undue panic among civil servants and is a blatant attempt to undermine the good work government is doing. He says he will take legal action if no retraction is done by Fiji Times. 
We definitely have to report them to the appropriate authorities because you see what, as, as I mentioned earlier, what we did when we read when I read the article, I personally met the reporter Nasik and I called him. I said, uh, "What you're reporting is not my words," and he confirmed to me, "Yes, those are not your words, and I haven't quoted you." That's what he said. Then when we wrote to them to retract the statement, they, if you read the paper today, they've come up with another story. The MP claims he never made any statement to this effect. FBC News has sent questions and made numerous calls to the Fiji Times editor Fred Wesley, who is yet to reply. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Police are looking into a social media posting that includes a video of two young children who are apparently drunk and drowsy slouching over in the back of a vehicle. The social media posting claims that the boys consumed a bottle of coke which was mixed with alcohol. Naisoro says again the Fiji police is disturbed by the nature of the post and it is a concern that there are some people who think this is an acceptable way to use social media, thinking that such posts about children is a laughing matter. Ensuring access to justice for all Fijian women is the focus of a recently launched project by a network of feminist civil society organizations. Maggie Boyle tells us this is all part of ensuring women are protected all the time. Titled Balancing the Scales, the three-year project is the first of its kind in the country. Spread across four NGOs, it's aimed at capturing real figures on just how accessible the justice system is for all women. This is a milestone for the transgender community to be able to uh, have the resources to do our first ever sexual and gender-based research focusing on transgender women in Fiji. Working in this new way um, for many, but not new for us as the feminist movement, to really build that greater understanding of what is access to justice. One of the key components of this project will be a piece of research which looks nationally um, across the four divisions at what women's experiences are when it comes to accessing justice. And we'll be able to provide the first ever of its kind, evidence-based um, research and recommendations. Women and people of all sexual orientation and gender identities, but also just women with intersectional identities, and that means all of us, need to be sure that we're experiencing justice in our bodies, but also that we're in environments that are just. With support funding from the EU, the project will also include awareness campaigns on the services available in the justice sector. Uh, everything that we do uh, for, 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 from the European Union is, is, has, a, has a very important human rights component and uh, we're confident that this, uh, this initiative will really play an important role in, in helping marginalized women. An estimated $1.2 million has been allocated for the project. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The Fiji Electricity Authority has warned the public that tampering with an electricity meter is illegal and those found to be involved in such illegal activities will be taken to task. FEA Chief Executive Hasmuk Patel has confirmed an average of 15 cases of meter tampering has been detected by the authority on a monthly basis. Savera Tamboa has more. The Fiji Electricity Authority says they have been facing a major task in fighting meter tampering which is a grave concern. We have revenue protection teams in FEA who go out on a daily basis uh, in an appropriate planned manner to see if customers are tempering their meters. And we do find such cases, a uh, number of cases on a monthly basis. And uh, as I said earlier, that going forward, we will not only be recovering the revenue lost, but we will be handing these cases over to the police to take appropriate action. FEA has engaged the Fiji police force in trying to curb the illegal tampering. It's obvious uh, that we need to take this action because of the, uh, the tamperings that has been ongoing for some time uh, and that uh, the ripple effects of that will benefit the consumer, the, the general consumers of Fiji uh, in the end when uh, the, those, uh, uh, those gaps in, in terms of uh, the, the economic leaks uh, or the financial leaks to FEA uh, are plugged. And, and the benefits will, will naturally come to the people of... FEA customers are advised to stop practicing such activities since the FEA can easily detect if any of its customers are tempering the electricity meter and should they be found doing so, they will not be spared. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. Coming up on FBC News, Lambasa Town Boundary Extension planned... And Andy Road users get good news. Stay with us for that and more. I'm Sarah. I'm from Tafu.
My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Gamiaton. I listen to Mario on the traffic jam in the afternoon. Hi, my name is Salah, I live in Asinu. Today FM rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Mulanila, I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM, it rocks in Raki Raki. I'm Mary from Mandera. I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. We love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Welcome back. This is FBC News. The government is working on a plan to expand Lambasa town. As Eleanor Turangevi reports, the plan involves the relocation of some key infrastructure. The northern town of Lambasa was incorporated as a town in 1939 and steadily grew from then on. Local Government Minister Parvin Bala says plans are in place to further develop the small township to improve and increase economic activity. We are also going to embark a major redevelopment where Lambasa Town Council is sitting right now. Uh, it's in the heart of Lambasa Town. That can be a very good enna for Lambasa. So we are looking at how we can relocate Lambasa Town Council uh, building and have a commercial activity so that there can be some revenue for the council. Well. During two recent public consultations on the expansion of Lambasa Town, suggestions were made on the relocation of the bus station and the market to where Subrail Park is currently situated. This would also mean the relocation of Subrail Park. The Ministry of Local Government and the Lambasa Town Council has taken this suggestion on board. We are weighing things up and uh, I have also seen the plans uh, with the Lambasa Town Council. With the population of over 27,000 people, plans for development are always welcome. It will be good for our generation, future generation, and uh, it's good the government is thinking well for Lambasa. More business will be coming up. And we are very happy and very proud of Lambasa Town. Over the years, Lambasa has grown slowly into what it is today, with major supermarket chains, retail stores and restaurants establishing themselves here. Eleanor Turangibu, FBC News. Members of the public in the larger Nandi area in Denarau Island can now enjoy the free flow of traffic thanks to the opening of the new Wailolo Junction to Narewa Village Road. However, the Fiji Roads Authority is calling on motorists to be cautious on the new road. Madhim Boletamana with this report. Travelling to and from Nanditan will no longer see motorists having to comprehend with traffic jams. This thanks to the completion of this three-kilometre stretch. We can new link through Denarau to Nandi Airport, uh, connecting the communities of Denarau, Wailoloa, Nandi to the airport. It's good for the community, it's good for the residents. The commute from Denarau to Nandi um, through to Wailoloa changes significantly. Um, it's an alternative to Queen's Road. But while there are still some work that needs to be done to touch up on the project, Khan says there are also still a few things that motorists will need to adhere to to ensure safety and the free flow of traffic. We have from this road a left turn only facility. Vehicles, motorists, buses will not be allowed to turn right to Nandi. But if you're coming from Wailolo, you take your right turn on the new road and head off to Nandi and Denarau this way. The alternative is in place. And uh, to access Northern Press Road, we would advise people to come through Enamana Road and then back down Queen's Road. The right turn is there on Queen's Road. Meanwhile, the Votoli roundabout to the Wailolo Junction phase of the project is expected to start with its next phase in the coming weeks. FBC News. This year's Rotuma Day is about helping people affected by tropical cyclone Winston. Fiji Rotuman Association Chairman Pasirio Furivai says the celebration tomorrow will raise funds for the cyclone appeal. Kelly Vazala has the details. The theme for this year's Rotuma Day is Who is My Neighbor? A journey in compassion, reflecting the devastation felt by all Fijians. This year, our celebration is slightly different from uh, previous years. Um, this is because uh, this year we had uh, Cyclone Winston and so the committee decided that uh, we will focus on uh, 
helping those who were affected. There are more retumens on Viti Levu than on the island, and so there will be big events in Suva and Lotoka as well. We will still have our um, farmer show as well as the women's uh, handicraft show. And um, not the normal um, uh, cultural uh, dances that we have usually have every year. Instead, we will have, uh, uh, each district will have uh, uh, an item. For many, Rotuma Day is all about showcasing their traditions. Rotuma Day is a very special day for me because it's a day where we celebrate our culture and our traditional identity. It also gives kids um, ideas, not only ideas, but uh, not to stray away from their culture and uh, give them uh, more insights on uh, uh, what develops within the Rutuman culture as they, as they grow. For Rutumans living in Suva, tomorrow's festivities will be held at the Churchwood Chapel in Rewa Street. Noaya! Happy Rutuma Day! Kelly Vavala, FBC News. The Fiji Broadcasting Corporation will be having its talent audition tomorrow. Chief Executive Ria Sayed Kayum hopes a large number of people will come forward to show their talents and be part of Fiji's largest broadcasting company. Sayed Kayum says there will be three different categories to cater for the three different types of talents. If anyone has got some unique talent, we would uh, like to showcase that on uh, national television through FBC TV. And also we are taking this opportunity to uh, uh, look for a suitable person to represent us, uh, represent FBC at this year's Hibiscus Festival. The audition will begin from 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Broadcasting House in Suva. And today is Friday the 13th. For many years, Friday the 13th has long been regarded as an unlucky day. So is it all just superstition or is there something more tangible at play? Internationally, fear of Friday the 13th has spawned a horror movie franchise, its own hard-to-pronounce term and a tradition of widespread paranoia when it rolls around each year. There are many other theories of how the ominous day came to be considered the harbinger of bad luck. But in Fiji, it was just another day with a sea of colors in Suva with people rushing about to get their shopping sorted for the weekend ahead. And Jamie is here now with the latest in sports. Nakakasita and good evening. Coming up, Fiji 7th team for Paris tournament named today. And weightlifters ready for Oceania meet later this month. This and more after the break. Bula FM number 2 and Seri. Four overseas base players have been named in the Vodafone Fiji 7 squad to play at the Paris tournament which starts tomorrow. The four inclusions make up the only changes to the squad that competed in Singapore, with Samisoni Virviri, Waisea Neadalewu, Chosua Tuisoba and Leone Nakarawa all returning to the seventh scene for the three-day event. Missing out are Semi Kunatani, Pio Tuwai, Masibe Sindakuanga and Vila Memata. With many Fijians still rebuilding after the devastation caused by Cyclone Winston and Zena, the Fiji 7 side continues to draw on this fact to inspire them to victory. And while fans always hope or expect the side to return victors after every tournament, support for the team never seems to weaken if they don't. Rohit Deo spoke to some fans today who all had a message of support for the national side. The hard yards are done and the real test starts tomorrow. And the fans here at home are confident of a win this weekend. They've chosen who they think will best represent us. I respect that. And whether they win or lose, I'll still be a Fijian fan. Hi, we, we have proved that Fiji has gone that far, so Fiji will win that uh, game. I wish the team the best, I hope they'll bring the cup, but uh, on the other hand, they will win gold in Rio. 
Our team in Paris will not only have the Paris title in mind, but now our win in France will more or less seal the series title for another year. I think uh, Fiji has got a good team, uh, depth and experience, and a uh, very good place, uh, the coaches chosen. And uh, looking forward to the goal in Rio. They will win it, obviously. Uh, we are backing the Fiji team 100% of all of them. We are supporting them and we give them our hopes and best. Our chances of uh, winning this series is very high. And I hope this tournament, Fiji will win. Uh, I think it's a very good team and we hope that they win this again. Ben Ryan Coach side begins its campaign against Scotland at 5.44 a.m. tomorrow, after which they play Wales at 9.14 p.m. Fiji's last pool match is against Samoa at 12.47 a.m. on Sunday. You can watch the entire tournament live right here on FBC TV. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the New Zealand 7 side is also not giving up on winning the series title at the end of the European Tour. And remember, you can catch the uh, live coverage of the Paris 7s on FBC TV. You can also catch live commentaries of Fiji's games on Radio Fiji 1 and Bula FM. Fiji will host the Oceania Boxing Federation General Assembly in July for the first time. Fiji Amateur Boxing Association says this can be attributed to the steady and effective growth of the sport and at its administration since returning from exile last year from the world governing body, the International Boxing Association, otherwise known as the AIBA. We're very privileged to host that, that meeting. It's the first time that we'll be hosting that meeting in Fiji. And I think Doug as well of Boxing Fiji you know, of the short distance that we've come in the 18 months that, you know, that I've removed the man and we've started operating with this new board and our members and our, the board members from the Western Division, I think it speaks well of, you know, the development that has taken place in Fiji. The Oceania Boxing General Assembly meeting will be held on July 15th. Barabrala adds another highlight in July is AIBA conducting a Star One coaching certificate clinic in Fiji for coaches in the Oceania region. This course is usually held in AIBA's Boxing Academy in Kazakhstan. Only 11 days until the Oceania Weightlifting Championships at Vodafone Arena in Suva. With Rio Olympic Games spots up for grabs, the 15-member Fiji squad will have a lot on their minds. Tale and Dadakadaka reports. These Suva-based lifters are part of the 24-member squad training for the Oceania Championships later this month. For the last four Three months we've, we've actually started intensive training and uh, this week we started to taper which means we've gone down from two sessions a day to, to one session and we're only training in the afternoons now. However, the intensity of the, the workouts uh, remain very, very high. The path to Rio lies in the overall medal tally and it will take a team effort to secure the lone male and female spot for Fiji. The top four getters in the women's total uh, points, they will uh, get an, uh, a place each for the Olympic uh, Games in Rio. And for the men, you have to be in the top five position to represent uh, the country each in the, in the upcoming Olympic Games. More than 150 lifters from 24 Oceania countries will converge at Vodafone Arena from May 24th to the 28th. The national squad is confident of a good outing and a spot in the Rio Olympics come August. Talento the Kadaka. FBC Sports. That's it from the sports desk this evening. It's back to Akusita now with business. <laughs> The who's who of women in business are gathering in Suva for the annual WIB Awards Night. We now join our reporter Kelly Vazala live from the GPH. Kelly, it must be exciting to see all women in the business sector get acknowledged. <laughs> Akosita, it is a beautiful evening as some of the most successful business women are present here tonight. With me, I have the Women in Business President, Dr. Nur Bano Ali. Dr. Ali, could you tell us what is uh, the main focus of tonight and uh, how much uh, positive impact has this awards had on business in women? Well, tonight's our, our biggest event for women in business. This is what we work for. We work for promoting women in the commerce and we've got the awards night and we're expecting 400 people here tonight and it's always a sellout event we have women will some very highly successful women will be awarded events uh, abo sorry be awarded with uh, prizes with the categories being businesswoman of the year executive of the year 
manager of the year and aspiring entrepreneur of the year. So, and we've got the finalists who have been featured, as you know, on the screen up there. And it's amazing. I mean, we've got great finalists. We had great applications. We had 78 applications in total. And the number is going bigger and better. And as more women are coming into the ranks of power and leading the way. Thank you. How many awards are being given out? Four. Four awards are being given out to the women, the businesswoman, the executive woman, the manager, and the aspiring entrepreneur. And then with the fifth award that Women in Business gives out as an organization is Employer of Choice. So that will be the fifth one. Okay. Thank you so much. So there you have it. It is indeed a grand evening as we celebrate the success of women who have excelled in business. Aposita. Thanks, Kelly. Fiji's national airline, Fiji Airways, has acquired a best-in-class A330 multifunction training device, or MFTD, which will be used for A330 pilot training at its head office in Nandi. This investment of $1 million is a first of its kind for the region and will reduce the airline's training costs significantly. The MFTD has been approved by the Civil Aviation Authority of Fiji and an approval certificate was officially presented to Fiji Airways today. The MFTD will be used as the initial stage for A330 pilot training before progressing to full simulator training, which is conducted at overseas training facilities. Fine weather prevailed over most parts of the country today. Ba was the hottest, ending the day on 32 degrees, which was matched by Lombasa. Lautoka was on 30, while all other centers ended on 29. Tomorrow should see fine, apart from a few showers of the interior and eastern parts of the larger island. An outlook for Sunday is for fine, apart from a few showers of the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. And recapping our main stories tonight, Prime Fiji's contract for streetlights has been terminated over fake bonds. Barman charged with murder has appeared in court with visible burns and the government says the Fiji Times was wrong in its report. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. And on to this week's poll question and we are asking, do you support the government's move to remove all credit history stored by Data Bureau? To answer, visit our FBC website. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. Or if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. Good night. Radio Fiji ki Sundar Sundar Yado ka khazana. एक दम बचपन के दिन याद करा देते हैं। हमारा नाम जोनी नाइडो है, हम रसा है मलोरो में, और हम टैक्सी ड्राइवर हैं। हम सब टाइम अपन टैक्सी में रेडियो ड्यूटी सुनता रहते हैं। हम सिंगाचोका के हैं, हमारा नाम है रोजी, हम वहाँ यहाँ पे रेडियो फिजी टू सुनते हैं। राम राम, मैं रमेश प्रसाद बोलता हूँ, तब � Radio Fiji 2, देश की धड़कन